Hello, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today I'm doing a quick video on the Quick Change Sharpening Fixture by GRS. This is a little tool um, for hand or uh, sharpening of gravers or for use with their GRS's honing system. Um, I'm going to do it by hand. I don't do enough engraving to warrant the purchase, plus I, you all know I have enough stuff. So I couldn't find any instructions, as any video instruction on this product, so I figured I'd show you what I know. There's a bunch of different parts that have specific names. Um, I don't know if they're gonna be important to you. I, I'm more like, let's get on with the video. But this comes with a stand and this the body, the fixture body, I guess it's called. And this part is the where you put the graver in. This part is where you adjust the angle of your graver. And I, there's a couple of fussy little steps that I will show you how to uh, do this with. By the way, the, the GRS makes these little quick change um, graver holders. And they're fabulous because all you need, oh, sorry, let me grab my graver. If you want to change your graver, just pop this out and put in a different tool or graver in here. Simple. So you only need to have one of these handles, although I think two would be nice, especially if you're switching between gravers a lot. I also put my beading tool in here for making beads on a bead setting. Another thing I really like about the GRS um, system is that they pre-cut their gravers. They've already made this area here, whatever the heck that's called. They're short, which is really nice because like this graver has to actually be cut down a handle shaped here and more of a cut out done on this part. This is unusable at this point. It's just so far away from the correct hold. With graver, you want to have your get the blade just, you know, right like that on your thumb. So you can actually have control over what you're working on. Compare that to this, trying to control the, the tip try lefty. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> so anyway, I really like this system and I'm going to show you how to use the sharpening fixture. So we take the uh, fixture body here and this is where the um, holder is going to go. See that little plate sticking up there? Well, that fits into this slot here on the um, holder and then it slides in like that so before we do this though what we're going to do is uh, as you hold it like this there's a little groove right here unfortunately mine has two so it was confusing at first but this is the one you're going to work with and there's numbers on this dial as you can see I'll try hopefully not blur you out. And you want to hold, put that on zero, and I'm kind of holding this up and in place because this knurled knob up here turns and tightens down. So you want to set that at zero. Next, we're going to play with this knurled knob and this turns, each click is a 45 degree turn. So what our goal is, is to line this set screw here up with the zero here. So it should be about two clicks. Nope, three on mine. So now I've got set screw lined up with that groove there. You with me? All right, this part's really hard. So now you're gonna insert, you wanna make sure that your set screw's out enough to allow the graver to go into this area right here and put it in any way. Don't tighten it at this point. 
Next, there's this, this is a knob here that needs to be loosened up. And we want, this also has a mark on the metal right there and you want to set that to zero. Just kind of hold the two pieces together and then tighten the wheel down. Next, we're going to put the fixture onto the body or the whatever this stand, I guess. Now, there's two ways you can potentially put this in here, like this or this. And I think you want to have it so that the numbers are on are on the top. And then we're going to lay the body and the graver down on a block of wood or a book or something flat. And I want my graver laying flat against whatever I'm using here, as well as pushed, that the graver is pushed all the way into here. Once you get it flat, take your little um, thingy, Allen wrench, maybe and tighten down the graver all the time keeping the graver pressed against the block or book all right now we're going to turn this so that the graver is facing in the correct direction so it'll click and each turn is 45 degrees remember so i only needed two so now i've got the part that i'm going to sharpen facing down Got that? Now, over here, traffic school just got out. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this knob. And this is going to go to, I want a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to put it at 45 and tight, tighten that screw down right there. And put it back on my post. If you're cutting very hard, metal use a 50 or 55 degree angle and softer stuff you can use less of an angle than the 45 but that's personal preference i would assume so you can experiment and see so right now i have it on a grinding stone but also you'll see behind i've got it set up on um sandpaper if you don't have a grinding stone you certainly can use sandpaper so I like to start with a 220. I've sprayed water on to my sand, wet dry sandpaper. You also want to make sure that the surface that you're um, glue, taping your sandpaper to is flat also. And sometimes this gets hung up. Let me move just the hair. It gets hung up on the stand. So you want to make sure that it's not and that everything is, see, you can, can you see here? It's raised up here. I can stick my finger under it. So you want to make sure to hold this base down. I'm holding it with my left so that I can use my dominant hand to maybe I'll do it backwards because you can't see. <laughs> so I'm just going to drag across the 220. Depending on how messed up your face of your graver is, um, will depend on how often and how long you have to do this. If the pants sandpaper starts to get really skunky, you can spray more water on it, wipe it up with paper towel, and that'll take up a lot of the metal dust. So I'm going to finish this and I'll show you what it should look like. The graver face should be smooth. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and evenly cut. It's hard to hold still when you have a macro lens on. Um, now we're going to move on to the 400 grit, and it's the same process. Um, you, I guess you could hold it. Move so you can see. I guess you could hold it on the back of the hand. Oh, jeez. You could also throw it on the desk. You can hold it from back here. But honestly, I, I obviously have more control holding down here. You just want to make sure you don't turn the knobs and loosen anything up. So I'm going to do this until once again I have a uniform finish on the face. You know, I don't want to see the prior sandpaper's marks on here. So I want to see a slightly finer look to that. 
then you're going to move on to your six, your thousand, and your twelve hundred grit. Just a couple swipes on each one, and you should be good to go. And here's our shiny face graver. There we go. When you're all done, loosen this. Pop out your graver. Let's stick mine back on the handle. And then I'm going to test it by putting it into my nail. And it should stick with very little pressure. If it slides off, you've done something wrong. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.